today I want to show you a cool way to chop up your drum breaks and samples using Ableton and Logic Pro. So here in Ableton Live I've got a drum loop. This one was from the samples folder that comes with Ableton. This is what it sounds like. So the first thing you want to do is create a new MIDI track. Right click on the channel, go to insert MIDI track. I'm going to go into my instruments folder and load in the plugin called Simpler. We're going to drop our audio file into the drop sample here section. Next, we're going to click on the slice button. And when we do that, you'll see these blue markers appearing across our waveform. So what this slice does is it takes our audio file and it chops it up into smaller segments. By default, it chops up our sample on the transients within the audio file. A transient is where the amplitude of our waveform increases rapidly from low to high in a short space of time. Normally things like drums have very noticeable transients. It then maps each of those individual slices onto our keyboard, starting from the key C1 and moving up each individual slice all the way up to well, however many slices you've got. So on that MIDI track, I'm going to create a MIDI clip by selecting, right clicking and going to insert empty MIDI clip. All of the slices are going to start on the note of C1. So let's scroll down to C1. Make sure our little headphone icon is turned on. If we click on C1, we should hear the first slice. Just to show you how this is working, I'm just going to place a note on each of the slices moving up a beat at a time, like so. And if I press play, should probably have muted the original track. You can hear it's playing those individual slices one by one. And if we double click on the track header to go into the device view, we should be able to see it's essentially going through each slice one by one because we have made that pattern move it up one note at a time. So now what we want to do, we want to find our main drum hits and arrange it into a pattern. I know that C1 here is our kick drum. We've also got another kick drum on C sharp one, another kick drum on D1, and a snare on D sharp one. And let's just start out with a simple four to the floor kick drum pattern like so, placing a snare on every other beat. Now when you do this, you'll notice both of the samples aren't playing at the same time. We can just hear the kick drum playing and not the snare layered on top. To fix this, we just need to go back into the device view by double clicking on our track header there and go down to where it says playback. You wanna change this from mono to poly, and that means we can now play more than one slice at a time. So the tempo is a little slow, so I'm going to bring this up to about 174. And this is going to be our drum and bass tempo. And in order to change our pattern now to a very popular or very common drum and bass pattern, we're going to remove the kick drums from underneath each of our snares. And then I'm going to take this second and this fourth kick drum here, and I'm just going to shuffle them over to be on the off beat, essentially halfway in between beats three and four. The same with this one over here too. And finally, we need to find a hi-hat for our pattern. So we've got one here and we've also got one here, E1 and G sharp one. I could place every single hi-hat on this E1 here just by drawing in four, selecting them all, and then using the command and D, or you can right click and duplicate across the whole clip like so. And you can hear though, this pattern is quite intense because it's playing the same sample over and over and over again. So we need to change a few things. I'm gonna get rid of all of those notes apart from the first four. I'm going to take the second and the fourth notes here and I'm actually going to move them up to that second hi-hat that we found before on G sharp one. 
let's bring down the velocity of the second, third and fourth hi-hats here. If you hold down the command or the control key on Windows, the little 100 or the velocity amount will pop up above the note and we can click and drag on the note to move this up and down. I'm not setting these to any velocity value in particular as long as they're all different to each other. So we've got to this point here and the sample just doesn't sound very natural. Let's head back into the device view then. We could play around with the transpose down here in the bottom right. And this transpose is going to pitch all of the individual slices up and down together. But one of the problems with this is the kick drum now sounds a little bit too high in pitch. Let's bring the transpose back down and I'm going to convert this simpler into a drum rack. You can do this by right clicking anywhere where our waveform is and going to slice to drum rack. And when you do this, it's going to take all those individual slices and it's going to put them in their own individual drum rack cell. When I press play, it will sound exactly the same. But what I can do now, I can go and look at these individual slices. I can go into my kick drum, for example, and I'm going to go over to the filter section. I'm going to bring the filter frequency down. I'm also going to turn on the drive mode down here and just turn the drive amount up on the right. And now that everything is inside this drum rack, all of the settings that I change on this kick drum are just going to be applied to the kick and not everything else. So I can even go over to the transpose. If we want a bit of a deeper kick drum, I could turn this down. Same goes for all the other slices too. So if we go back to our snare, I'm going to go into slice five here and slice nine. I can also rename these if I wanted to as well, which you should probably get into the habit of doing. And you can do this by right clicking on the cell and going to rename, or you can use command and R and start typing and hit enter when you're done. So with these hi-hats, I'm going to change the mode of simpler here to classic. And now I can use the envelope in the bottom right hand corner to shape them. I might pitch these up a little bit too. So one thing we might want to do to the kick drum, we could go into our kick slice here, go into the controls section and over by the filter, I'm going to click on the envelope button over here. I'm going to turn up the amount and this is the amount that this filter envelope is going to affect our filter cutoff down here. We could adjust this decay time. And on this filter, I found that the 12 dB slope is generally a little bit more natural than the 24 when doing this technique. Now we could also add something like drum bus to our whole drum group just to beef everything up just by dragging it straight onto our track header over here. Turn the drive onto medium. We can turn the compression on, bring the trim down a little bit so it's not doing as much compression and then bring the transients up. Now, one of the best features of using this slicing mode is if you wanted to change the speed of any drum loop. If this was an audio file and we were just time stretching the audio file using one of the warp modes in Ableton or the flex mode in Logic, we're most likely going to introduce some artifacts into the audio. We get graininess or noisy delays and things like that. But with slicing, all we have to do is just simply turn our tempo down like this. And you can hear everything still sounds nice and clean. And that's just because it's triggering those individual slices rather than having to stretch them in and out. So if we wanted to change this from a drum bass pattern into something a bit more skippy, like a garage drum beat, we bring the tempo down to around 130, 140. Going into our clip, what we're going to do is remove all of the hi-hats apart from the off beat, which if you remember is the halfway point between each individual beat.
But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to drop some of those hi-hats back in within our individual beats. I'm going to be placing them on the second and the 14th slots here, which would be the second and 14th, 16th notes within that pattern. You'll see why in a minute. I'm just going to drop them in randomly. Let's head over to our grooves. I'm going to click on the hot swap button here. I'm going to head up into our browser, scroll all the way down to swing sixteenths. And this number on the right hand side is the intensity. So if I pick a low number, double click whilst we're in hot swap mode. The drum beat's not going to change that much. But as we start to increase that number on the right, you'll be able to hear the effect more and more. Let's play some more kick drums in as well. If you want to accentuate that skippy garage feel, then you just need to place your instruments on those second and fourth sixteenth notes. Let's say at the end of our first bar on that fourth sixteenth note. And obviously it takes a little bit of experimenting to find something that you like. So if we're looking to do the exact same thing inside of Logic, I'm going to go into my instrument list here when I'm loading in my software instrument track, and I'm going to go to the quick sampler, pick in the stereo mode. I'm going to find my audio file that I used in the last example. I'm going to drag it into that load area. You should see the two options here, original and optimized. And for this, we can just use the original. It doesn't really matter too much. Once the file's loaded in, we can just click on slice at the top again here, and you'll see it will do exactly the same things it did in Ableton. You can also see where the notes are on your keyboard. You can see the same as it was in Ableton. It starts on C1 and moves all the way up. And you can also do exactly the same when we went slice to drum rack inside of Ableton. If we right click on the background of our logic sampler, we can go to create drum machine designer track. And that will take all those slices and drag them into a drum machine designer where you can program and edit them in exactly the same way as we could inside Ableton. This video features topics from our 16 hour online DAW courses in Ableton Live and Logic Pro. We also cover sampling and advanced sampling techniques in the sound design module alongside synthesis techniques too. So go to our website modulateonline.com to view all our courses and if you need any advice on what to learn, just click on the contact button in the top right hand corner and get in touch with us today.